Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Wonder Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at one of the trickiest wonders to use in this game, but one that is definitely really good if you can use it appropriately, and that is the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is a wonder that was added to the game with the Gathering Storm expansion, and it is unlocked with the Combustion technology. This does make it an Atomic Era wonder. In order to get the Eureka for Combustion, all that you have to do is extract an artifact, and if you're going for a culture game, in which you probably would be if you want to build Golden Gate Bridge, uh, you'll probably have extracted an artifact by this point, so this is a very easy Eureka to get. As far as the building requirements for Golden Gate Bridge are concerned, this is where things get a little bit more difficult for it because its building requirements are pretty unique in comparison to a lot of the other wonders in the game. So what you have to do with this wonder is you have to put it on a coast tile that is in between two adjacent land tiles that are both owned by the same city, I believe. Um, so this sounds very simple, but it's really, really, really reliant on your spawn. There's a lot of situations where you just won't be able to build this wonder in a given game, but once you are able to like kind of recognize what these spots look like, then it becomes pretty easy to place down this wonder, provided that you have it in your land. As far as the production cost of Golden Gate Bridge is concerned, it is 1620 production, which is pretty much the standard for the Atomic Era wonders. As far as Golden Gate Bridge's bonuses are concerned, it will provide you with plus three amenities to the city that it's built in. It will also give that city plus four appeal to all of its tiles, and it will also double the tourism output from all of your national parks and improvements that are in the city. These bonuses are really, really strong for a number of reasons, and they're pretty much all related to culture victory. So the plus three amenities, that's, you know, whatever, it's fine. It's plus three amenities. That's, it's pretty good, but it's not, you know, game changing. But the appeal and the extra tourism is really insanely strong. So the fact that you get plus four appeal to all tiles in the cities makes it so that it's really easy to put down national parks. Because if you remember from whenever we talked about national parks sometime, I don't even remember what video that was in. Whenever you're placing down national parks, I believe it was Culture Victory Basics, that's the one. But whenever you're placing down uh, national parks, you have to make sure that you have all of the tiles that are at least charming. So getting plus four appeal on all the tiles in the city pretty much makes it so that all the tiles in the city will have at least charming appeal, unless you have a, you know, a, an extremely high number of mines or something like that. So for that reason, it makes it so that you can place a national park on pretty much any tile in the city, and you can fill the city's tiles with a bunch of national parks. On top of that, remember that National Park's output tourism based on the appeal of the tile, so this is going to increase the tourism output of every single one of the National Parks, in addition to the fact that it's also going to double that tourism, so you're effectively going to be getting 32 extra tourism on every single National Park in your city whenever you build Golden Gate Bridge. Then, take into, effect the count, or take into account the fact that you can get extra modifiers on your tourism. I think it's 50% or maybe it's 100% that's the maximum. So you can get upwards of, you know, 48 extra tourism on every single national park in the city, in addition to the fact that now you can build a lot more because the appeal in the city is better overall. So with Golden Gate Bridge, it transforms a single city into just an absolute, like, tourism powerhouse. You can output so much tourism from national parks or seaside resorts as well, because you will get double tourism on your seaside resorts and the extra appeal as well. So both of those make this a really, really strong cultural wonder. And now it is that time to move on and give the Golden Gate Bridge its wonder rating. So if you're new to the series, all that you need to know here is that these ratings go on a 1 to 5 scale, with 1 being the worst and 5 being the best. So for its overall rating, I think that the Golden Gate Bridge deserves a 3. It definitely has a ton of potential to be a really good wonder, and as I mentioned, if you have a good game where you have a lot of land tiles, then this can be an absolute cultural, like, masterpiece. It can make a city so insanely strong whenever you're able to build it in a really good spot. The problem, though, is that there are very few games in which you're able to actually make that great of use of it. So the ideal thing that you want whenever you're trying to build Golden Gate Bridge is like a little maybe strip of coast that goes along like the edge of the city's borders. So that way you still have mostly land tiles in the city. So that way you have a lot of spots for national parks, but you still have a good spot to place down this wonder. So as far as the use cases are concerned, there's really only one, and that's the huge tourism boost in a single city. But as I mentioned, this is so reliant on your own spawn or just the general land generation around you that there's a lot of games where you won't even have a single valid spot in your entire empire to build it. As far as this difficulty rating is concerned, I think it deserves a 5 for pretty much that reason that I just explained, where it's very hard, you have to have a very particular spawn and very particular land in order to be able to put this down and actually make use of it effectively. There are some cases where you'll get like little one-tile islands that maybe can make use of it, or 
cities that don't have a lot of land tiles and thus not a lot of space for seaside resorts and national parks, so in those cases you can build it there, but it's not going to be quite as good. The other thing that's really irritating with this wonder is that um, although you may not always have uh, the availability to build it based on your location, there's generally going to be somebody in the game that's able to place it down, and whenever you're playing on Deity, of course, if an AI is able to place down a wonder, chances are they're going to. So, on Deity, the AI really like to build this wonder still, even if it's like, if even if it does absolutely nothing for them, so you still have to be moderately competitive if you are going to be trying to build it. But mainly the difficulty here comes from just how difficult it is to place it down and how, how specific the land requirement is based on just RNG from land generation. As far as its consistency rating is concerned, I think it deserves a 3. As I mentioned, it has some instances where it can be really, really strong if you have, you know, those edge cases where you have a lot of land in the city and just that one little spot that's valid for Golden Gate Bridge. But in most cases, you're not going to have, like, half of the city's tiles are probably going to be around coast tiles, which you can't put national parks on coast tiles or ocean tiles, of course. Um, so for that reason, in those situations, it's a lot less good. And the other thing is that it's only app applicable to Culture Victory. I would never build this outside of Culture Victory, so for those reasons, I think it deserves the 3 in consistency. So thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.